there we go. So yeah, like I said, I usually call this being a good paperless agent um, because you can literally go from the beginning of the deal to the end now without ever needing to print or ever needing to take a pen to paper. So um, that's the idea is that I want you guys to like, you know, get used to doing that with your clients. It saves so much time. Anybody who's been doing this for a long time knows that we used to have to get in our car, drive to our client, get the signature, fax it in at the office. God forbid there was a change or a sign back. You have to drive back to that client again. So it's saving us so much time. We can do so much more business this way. If you guys just, you know, um, teach yourself a little bit, play around with it and get used to it and, um, and learn how to use the, um, the kits and AuthentiSign. Um, the first thing I'm going to start off with is the web form kits. Um, what I did for this office is when I came, I created templates um, to make it super easy for you guys. So you just have to go in and fill out some basic information and you can have a complete offer made. You don't have to rely on the front desk. And the front desk is great, like if you're in your car and you need an offer, say, done by the time you get to the office because you're meeting your client in the boardroom. That's great. But, you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night or if you have signbacks and stuff, you need to know how to do the stuff on your own um, just so you never get caught, right? So it's a good idea to do that. So I'm just going to start by sharing my screen. The first thing I'm going to go over is the web forms kits. I, I've done this topic a couple of times already now with this office. So just let me know if there's anything specifically you want me to go over or if there's a section that you don't totally don't get. I don't mind repeating myself. Um, and then as long as you guys learn while we're doing it. So I'm going to go first into um, our stratus. Okay, so... Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and we're just going to create a blank web form kit. So I'm going to highlight my mouse here. Um, and then I'm, there's two ways you can do this. I'm going to show you the blank way and then I'm going to show you how to push it from your MLS um, listing, right? So you're going to go into web forms. Okay, so when you're in web forms, just to familiarize yourself a little bit, the house here is your kits, your transaction kit. So think of it, it's going to house all the documents you need for one transaction. So that's going to include all your office paperwork, your FinTrack information, along with your offer that you're going to present to the, um, to the listing agent, right? The pen is AuthentiSign. The forms is if you need individual forms here, right? You can store documents in here. You have your calendar, a fax feature direct, and your contacts. Okay, so the first thing we're going to start off with is the house. When you click on the house, you go in, and as you can see, there's any of the transactions that I've recently done, right? Um, so I'm going to show you how to create a new one. Let me just make my screen a little smaller here because I have so many things open on my end. Okay, so in your transactions, the way you start a kit is you go to the top right here and you click the plus, the add button. When you go to add, you have the option of naming it. You can name it whatever you like. I generally, as you see, name it the property address. So let's just say 123 Main Street is the one that we're doing. Now, before you go create, I need you guys to go into the templates. This is what the office has created. This is what I created for templates for our office specific. So if any other agent from the our office went into their um, uh, web kits, they don't have these templates unless they've created them them themselves. So the beauty of this is, is that you can go in and you can pick any template that you're doing. So you have, I didn't put too many commercial in because there's so many different types of commercial that you can do. Each deal is so different. Come to me personally and we'll kind of curate that. Commercial lease is the most straightforward if you're doing an offer. So I put a commercial lease offer template in there. I put a condo for lease. Okay. Condo for sale. If you're doing listings, we need to get ready for your listing appointment. A condo lease offer, a condo purchase offer, freehold for lease listing and for sale listing if you're going for your listing appointments, and freehold lease and purchase offers. Okay. So today I'm just going to click on the freehold purchase offer um, to show you guys what's there. Okay. And then I'm going to go to create. So what it does is it brings you to the wizard, okay? So in the wizard, you can fill out different things in here if you wish, one, two, three, Main Street, okay, for instance, right? And then you click next, and there's a couple of different information you can put here. Really and truly, if you're creating an offer, you don't need to fill out the contract date, the expiry date, the offer date, 
the wizard is just going to fill out those fields on the form for you. So I tend to just click next, next, next on a blank one. Here you can add additional forms if you want. If you need, say, like a disclosure or something that if you guys are buying something for yourself or if there's any additional like Schedule Bs or anything, you can add it at this point just by clicking the Add button. And I can show you guys how to do that, but I'm just going to create this kit first and then go Done. Once you click Done, you have all the forms you need for this kit on this side. So see, you have the offer summary document. You have your individual identification record. So your fin track is there, your confirmation of cooperation, your agreement of purchase and sale, your buyer rep, and you're working with a realtor. Okay. So now if I go into the agreement of purchase and sale, for instance, I went in and I had typed in the wizard 123 Main Street. So see how it's auto filled the 123 Main Street for me there. Okay. That's what you can do when you fill out the wizard, it'll auto fill these. The reason I don't really bother, I think it's an extra step that you don't necessarily really need, is because when you autofill stuff out on here, in, within the kit, inside your form, it'll automatically fill it on the other forms anyways. So let's just pretend that it's me buying the property, Christine Boland, right? Always do a quick save here. So you go to the folder, you go to the disk and click save when you're going in between forms. And I just warn you guys, especially if you worked really hard on your clauses or you just completed the whole agreement of purchase and sale, I find sometimes it glitches. And if you're going in between forms, it might glitch and you know log you out of web forms or just you know not work. So I always hit a quick save before I go to the next form. Okay. To toggle in between the forms when you're within your kit, you go to the paper up here and see how it says transaction forms. And I'm gonna click on it. And I just want to click to another form to show you how it autofills the fields out for you when you put it form to form. So see, I put the Christine Boland on the agreement of purchase and sale. I've now come to the buyer representation agreement and Christine Boland is there on the buyer side. Okay. So any information that's similar from one form to the next, like buyer, seller information, uh, address, you know, legal description, stuff like that. We'll go from form to form as necessary as you need it. Um, we'll talk about something a little different when we push it from our MLS listing, but that's the basics of creating a completely blank kit from this point. Is anybody confused or does anybody want me to go over that point again before I go on to the next? No? Okay, everybody good? So I'm just gonna stop the share here real quick because sometimes I lose it if I go to share again. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go over to, oh, hang on here. Let me close this web forms. Everybody can see the login page there now. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm just going to, just in case, I'm going to stop the share and do it again. Because I know sometimes doing this over and over again, when I switch screens, you guys lose the share and you guys are on my old screen. Okay. So from our search page, we're going to go and we're going to look at a product. And we're going to pretend we're making an offer on that property. Okay. So I'm going to go to search. And I'm just going to search something in, say, EO4 around the office. Okay. So Let's pretend we want to put an offer in on 1024 Pharmacy Avenue. We took our client to see it. They really like it. We're going to put an offer in right now. Excuse me. At the top of every MLS listing, Web Forms Authentisign is here. Uh, let me just highlight my mouse again so you guys can see. So you guys can see where Web Forms Authentisign is above the listing. Yeah. All you're going to do is you're going to click on it from here. And it's going to take you directly into that web forms where we went in before, but it's going to start creating a transaction kit for us. It already put the address on top. So now don't forget to pick your template. I'm going to pick freehold purchase offer. Then I'm going to go click create. And now what it's done is since I've pushed it from the listing, see how it's auto filled out everything in the wizard for me? It's filled out the description, the feet, 
the frontage, the depth, the address, everything for me. If I click to the next, it's got even the contract date, the expiry date, a lot of stuff that we don't even need for our, our uh, offer, but it's all, all automatically there. So I'm gonna click next again. It's got the listing agents information and the listing brokerage information. It's got all the forms for our kit. Click next and I click done. So I caution you guys to do it this way and I'm gonna show you a few reasons why. You're gonna go into your agreement of purchase and sale now and there's very little for you to fill out. Um, you need to, only, the only thing that you need to fill out is things that I couldn't read off the listing. Like for instance, today's date or tomorrow's date, whenever you're submitting the offer, right? Your buyer information. So let's just put Christine and again, but see how it's already filled out the purchaser information. So this is one point I want to stop and just caution you guys real quick. Sometimes if there's two sellers names, it'll put it all on this line. You guys need to separate it, put an and, and put it on the second line. Because when you go to your signing, what's going to happen is on your page five, it's not going to separate it and you won't have it on the two lines. Okay. So I find this is one of the glitchy parts here. So here where it's putting the seller, if there was a second one, it would put it on the same line as Paul. If you didn't correct that, when you go to your agreement of purchase and sale, this is only when you're pushing it directly from your MLS listing, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing is you guys have to remember, you have to do your due diligence. So here, 4.49 feet, I'm assuming, right? 124 feet, okay? This is what the listing agent has entered in the MLS listing. So, you know, human error, or maybe they didn't do their due diligence to check, you still want to go and check this information. Very often I find the frontage and the depth and the legal description are incorrect or they're not fully complete. So I'm going to just go in and show you guys real quick how to double check this and do your due diligence for your client because it's super easy when you're using this wizard just to go click, click, click because all the information is already auto-filled, right? So I'm going to go here and I'm going to stop the share for a second, come back into my screen, make sure you guys are following with the share. Okay, so I'm back at the listing again. How do I do my due diligence? So first of all, I'm going to go to Geo Warehouse and I'm going to double check the title, first of all, make sure that there's only that one person that's supposed to be on title. Okay. So Geo Warehouse has come up, 1024, and it's still the Paul Lushner guy. So that's great. Here it says 4.49 by 124 as well on the MLS listing. Sorry, let me grab my highlighted mouse again so you guys can follow here. So 4.49 by 124 feet. So that's correct on the listing. Okay. It also has the legal description. I always still like to go into public records to make sure because very often Geo Warehouse didn't have the frontage, the depth, and all of this information before. We used to just go on it and check title. They've kind of added these additional information over the years on the Geo Warehouse, but it's good to just check both real quick so you know that you've done your due diligence for your client, right? Because remember, it doesn't matter what the listing agent has put on the listing. You're representing your client. Your client's depending on you to represent them with correct information. It's a legal document that you're drawing up at the end of the day. You're going to be liable. Rico will, you can't say, well, the listing agent had it wrong on his listing, right? If you don't come in here and check, they'll say, well, did you check to your warehouse? Did you check public records? These are the questions that'll come up if um, you run into anything with Rico, God forbid. Um, so you need to make sure that you're putting the correct information on your, your agreement of purchase and sales, right? So I'm just going to stop the share for a second, come back, make sure you guys have my screen. Oh, hang on here. So very often then I go into property line here and I just make sure that the legal description is correct. And a lot of times it's not even 100% the listing agent's fault that they've put in wrong information. Sometimes the legal descriptions are really long. And for some reason, they don't fit in our MLS, MLS section where we put the legal description. And a lot of them carry it down in the broker remarks. Well, the wizard doesn't automatically read that when you're putting it into the wizard um, in web forms when you're creating a kit. It doesn't know that the rest of the legal description is maybe down in the broker comments. So you have to make sure that the whole legal description is there in your offer. So we're gonna go back to our offer now. And see, I can already see, I don't know if you guys followed there. Hold on. 
I'm just going to copy this before I switch my screen and share with you guys again. Oh my goodness, so many things open when I'm doing, got the Zoom call and everything and sharing screens here, always fun. So I come back and I can already say here that I'm not happy with this legal description. It says lot 65 plan 4219. This is what I've copied and pasted off of public records, okay? I feel much safer putting this on, okay? Um, I've had a lot of agents come to me recently and that's why I really wanna point this out. I have to put an amendment through. Why is the lawyer saying I have to put an amendment through? It's been because they don't have the complete legal description there in the document in the agreement of purchase and sale. So make sure you're taking that two seconds. It takes, it's much, much quicker to check it at this point. Just do a quick copy and paste and fix it here for the frontage, the depth and the legal description and double checking that it's, that's the only person on title, that Paul is the only person on title, right? Okay, so the rest of it that you have to do is really basic. You're gonna fill in your purchase price, highlight my mouse again. All right, you put in your purchase price here, you put your deposit in, you know, you're gonna check the listing and make sure there's no additional schedules. Does everybody know how to do that? I'm just gonna go real quick over to the listing again and make sure you guys know how to do that while we're staring at the screen. So we're gonna go back in here and you're gonna check and see that there's no additional schedules here. So all I see is a floor plan. Do you guys see that at the top of the listing? I'll click it and see what it is. So it's a floor plan of 1024 pharmacy. You guys still following the screen there? Mm -hmm. Let me know if it gets lost because sometimes it loses the share there. So very, very often though, lots of different listings. Let me switch the listing and see. See, schedules, it's not, it's actually uncommon to not have a Schedule B from the listing brokerage's office. Basically, their Schedule B is clauses that protect their brokerage and their agent, right? For like measurements, deposit, um, interest, stuff like that. Okay, so you have to check on that. Let me go back to the offer here. So then you continue and you can put the irrevocable, the completion date. You're gonna put the title search in on the next page. You're gonna put the information from the seller and the buyer, right? We know how to do that. We gotta grab it off of the listing, okay? Let me go back to 1024 here. Oops, there it was. So you scroll down to the bottom and you see the brokerage information here, their phone, their fax. It's Gina Ryder. If you click on Gina Ryder, you can find her information there along with her email address. So you can fill all that out for the offer. Chattels included, this is another section that's a biggie now. So you guys really have to make sure you're itemizing things. Not only what's in the description, but what you've seen when you've shown the property, okay? So for instance, this says two stoves, basement one in as is condition, two fridges, electrical light fixtures, gas burner and equipment, central AC, broad loom were laid, blinds, shed, nest equipment, hot water, tank as a rental, washer, dryer, and some pump, okay? So I would just copy and paste what they have here. But for instance, last week, I just did an offer on a property that had a ride-on mower. I put the ride-on mower there, right? I noticed that they had, um, uh, it was like kind of a, a recreational property. So I'm just giving you an example. It had a canoe on the property. So I put a canoe. No biggie if they leave it out or they cross it out, but you want to like look around the property because as your client's seeing them, they might think that those things are automatically included. Like they might say, hey, it's a big property and I saw that right on lower in the garage and that's not included, right? These are big items. You also want to make sure you try to be as specific as possible, which I know is difficult when you walk through so many properties. How are you going to remember if it was a, you know, a Kenmore fridge or a Whirlpool dishwasher, but as specific as you can, even if you have to go back into the listing and look and say, stainless steel appliances that's helpful because it's not unheard of that you walk your client through the property they close and they switch out the appliances and they put in basic white appliances and they only had the stainless steel there while they were staging the property right so try to be as specific as you can so generally what i do is i go and i copy and i paste this chattel information from here from the listing right i go back to my offer i put it in 
and I might say stainless steel, I might add to it stainless steel, whoops, can't type today, steel stoves, whoops, stove, basement it as is, two fridges, and I'm going to take uh, out the um, hot water tank here because it's going to go in the next section, right? It's not a chattel that's included, it's a rental, so don't have it in your chattel section, right? Fixtures excluded. Make sure you put something in here. A lot of people are leaving it blank. Um, it's very easy for someone to add something in after the fact. So you want to make sure that you're putting in something like none or NA, right? And then I'm going to put the hot water tank down here. Okay. Your HST is included in because we're doing a resale. And then the rest is pretty straightforward. You're going to put your legal description in here. Sorry, your um, uh, present use of the property, which is most of the time we're doing single family residential. Your title search, which will be about two weeks before your closing date. Make sure you're also, I've been seeing a lot of amendments for um, title search dates and closing dates. You want to make sure they're work days, that they don't fall on a holiday. So, you know, like we've all got that family date coming up in February. Don't forget it and be putting it on your offers. Or you'd be doing a lot of amendments. And the last part I want to show you before we go to Authentisign, because I really want to get to Authentisign. I know some people have been asking me about it today, is the clauses. So what I've done here is I've put in basic clauses that we use every day um, for our office. Make sure you read them. If you don't need these clauses, you can delete them. If you need additional clauses, you'll need to add them, right? So you have your two conditional clauses in here to start. Conditional upon the buyer arranging their first charge mortgage, conditional upon the buyer getting an inspection of the property, five banking days, five banking days. Okay, we all know a lot of this isn't happening right now. So you're probably going to go in on a firm deal. I would caution you to not delete it at this point in your offer. Um, <coughs> Rico is wanting to know that we gave our clients the opportunity because in this kind of pressured environment, another complaint I've been seeing very often from clients complaining about their um, their agents is that, oh, I didn't know I was waiving that condition, right? I want you guys to leave it in at this point and I'll show you how to do your due diligence to make sure that you're proving that you're explaining to your clients that their clause is available to them and that they're choosing to waive them. We're gonna do it at the authentifying point, okay? Um, but yeah, just read over these clauses and see how everything fits into your deal and if you need to add anything or if you need to delete anything that is not pertinent to your deal but the basic clauses are there. Is everybody good to this point? Everybody good online so far? Nobody's confused how I got to anywhere? No problem. Okay, Here sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. Okay, I'm gonna go to the Authentisign now. So hopefully the last time I did this, Authentisign was brand new, the Authentisign and it didn't click over. So sometimes it's glitchy. I don't know if you guys are, have tried it, but I'm gonna show you how to go directly from here now and push this into your Authentisign, okay? So what you need to do is you need to go to your transaction up here. Hold on, let me just get my mouse. You need to go to your transaction forms up here, the paper at the top, okay? Basically what you need to remember is a lot of people get confused when where to click and how to click. The left is anything when you're starting new, if you're working within your kit, you always wanna look at the top bar. The top bar is gonna do anything within your kit, okay? So I'm gonna to go to the top transaction forms and I'm only gonna pick the ones I need for signing. So for instance, your ident identification record, your FinTrack, you don't need to sign it. So I need my client to sign the working with a realtor, the BRA, the agreement of purchase and sale, the confirmation of cooperation and the offer summary document, okay? I'm only gonna pick those for us. Okay. And now you see there's five forms in my basket. Morning. I'm gonna go and click on my basket. And I can see that it's thrown five forms into my basket and I'm gonna to go to the pen. The pen is gonna push it into, oh good, it's giving me the choice. Before it was glitchy, when the new Authentisign came out, it didn't give you this choice and it just kept on kicking it right into classic. So when I trained it, I had to go and start a new kit, but I'm glad I can do it from here now. New Authentisign, send to new Authentisign. So it's gonna create a new kit now in my signing.
Let's find the lead. Okay, so now I'm in my new Authentisign. Who's tried to use this yet? Everybody's tried to use it? They're changing in a few days, right? I think eight days, VG was saying, right? So now I want to add my participants. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back quick one step just to show you guys how you're gonna add your contacts in, okay? I urge you to add your contacts in because very often I get into a kit and I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna need my client to sign this once. And I keep on having to add and add and add their email address. So the way to avoid that is you go to your MLS, you're gonna go to the home page, go to your web forms at the beginning. And along the side here, you guys remember I pointed out the, the little business contact card. I'm gonna to go to contacts and I'm gonna go add, create contact. And I'm gonna just say, you know what? They're buyer and it's, Christine, oops, can't spell my name today. Christine Bolin, and it's going to be Bolin Realtor at gmail.com. There we go. And I'm just going to save. Okay. The reason you're going to take that step is when you go back to your Authentisign now, the first thing you have to do is add the signers. So who is it that you need to sign this document? So I need to add from my contacts, I'm just gonna, I usually use myself there. Where'd I put myself? Christine, well, it looks like I've done this before in training, right? Um, pick the buyer one, okay? And I'm gonna click select. And then you need to add yourself because there's parts of the document that you have to sign, as we all know, like on the BRA and everything where you have to add yourself, okay? And then you're gonna save. Okay, it's gonna let me assign the roles now here. So I'm gonna say, oh, it's gonna be a little confusing because I put two Christines in there. You know what, let me back up. I'm gonna take one Christine out just so you guys totally don't get confused. Okay. I'm going to do what I normally do. And I go and I add my hubby. He gets a lot of training um, emails from me. <laughs> and I like, oh, don't worry. Just ignore if you get a training uh, or an e-signature notification to sign, right? All right. So there we go. We'll add the hubby as the buyer instead to not confuse you guys. Okay. So from here, okay, I've added both myself and Brady. If there is a specific order, I want to set them. It's going to go email to everybody at the same time now. Whoever signs first is great. But say for some reason, I really want to make sure that I get, you know, Brady to sign before I sign. I can set the signing order. And I can come in here and I can make him number one and me number two. The only thing that'll do is that means it'll hold the email and it won't send it to me unless Brady is finished signing it. So those are the two ways you can set up how, which way your contacts are signing, okay? From here, you're gonna go, you can go into your documents. You can see all the documents you have. So there's the five that I had to add. Say I have to add a schedule B as well, okay? Normally what you do is you go to the listing. So we'll go back to the listing. Now this one didn't have a schedule B, so I'm just gonna click to the next MLS listing. And I'm gonna take the schedules. And I'm just going to download their Schedule B quickly onto my computer somewhere. Usually I have like, you know, different um, um, folders for each of my clients. So maybe I'll just put training here. Whoops. Okay. So I'm going to save that Schedule B here in training. And we'll go back to our Authentisign. So at this point, if you need to add a document, you just go to Add Document or Form. Okay, you want to upload or import. You can drag the document here or click to upload. You can do a search on your, your computer. And I just went in here and I saved it as trading. Where did it go now? There we go. Okay, so now I have all the documents that I created in my kit with my client information on it, along with that schedule B that I named training from the listing. Okay, 
Now I'm ready to go to my tools and do different tools to sign this document now. So the first, I'm gonna to go to Brady for instance, okay? So now remember when I brought up that screen and I identify him as the buyer, right? He's the buyer. When the wizard fills out your form, it's super easy because you don't have to drag and drop all your initials and all your signatures, but you have to be really cautious. You have to know your forms and you have to go through because a lot of times it puts, it'll put the initial or signature wherever the buyer is on the form, but sometimes you don't need it in those places. Like for instance, on the working with a realtor, it says is representing my interest and is not representing my interest. So if you're using the wizard, you have to know to go in there and delete that one, okay? Whoops, it deleted both on me there. Just put it on the top line again. Another place that does it is this buyer representation agreement. Over here, it says if you're signing for longer than six months. Well, I'm not usually signing my client for longer than six months. So I'm going to go in and delete it from this spot as well. Okay. But see, it's put the initials everywhere I need there for my buyer. Okay. It did not put my initials in for me, probably because I switched things around at the beginning. So this is a good opportunity to show you guys how to use different tools in here. So all you have to do is make sure that whoever is signing, their name is the one on top here. Okay, you have to make sure. And then you go in, for instance, I want an initial, I'm just going to click on it, and I'm going to drag it over to where I need that initial. Okay. So over here, I'm going to take it, I'm going to drag it over, I need the initial here. And... Or edit editing names so if you need to edit the name you can go and edit the contact itself mm -hmm. um the wording we can add text boxes so i was i'll show you how we can add a text box so for instance say here it says name a salesperson i'm like whoops i forgot to fill out that form i know my signature is needed here but i need this to say my name okay i'm going to go down to text box and i'm going to create a text box here pull it up to the line and it just says salesperson's name, Christine Boland. So if you need to add some wording to your document, you can add it there. You especially need it on the Schedule B generally because a lot of people just put the PDF up of the Schedule B on their listing and it's not editable. So you need to know how to put that text box in there. I can do it again when we get down to the Schedule B. So we'll go here. You can do different things. Say you need to cross out that clause now. This is the point where I was saying you can go and cross out a clause. I never ever delete your clauses just as a rule, because like I was explaining before, you wanna make sure that you're not, you're able to show that you gave your clients the opportunity to put that clause, that condition in, and that they chose to waive that condition, right? So over here, I'm just gonna choose line. It brings me a little pencil and I'm going to hold it from the top to the bottom and cross out the clause. So there you go. I've still got a firm deal now without deleting it. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to change it to my buyer again. And I'm going to drag the initial over and make sure that they're initialing, acknowledging that they know that the clause has been wiped out. Right? It's so the best way to do it. Never, ever delete your clauses and have it completely blank. Okay. I'm just going to go down to the Schedule B. We'll do the text box function again. See, how can I get uh, get out get the line out in case if I put the line wrong? Oh, okay. Can, so that can you one. show that, please? You just need to click on it, okay, and you can hit delete on your computer. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, you just need to click on it again. It'll highlight it. So I'll, I'll do it again. I'll show you. So say I draw the line here, and I'm like, whoops, I didn't mean to put that whole thing on here. I just click on it again and I hit delete. Oh, where's the delete? Oh, delete just on your keyboard. Sorry, I know you can't see me. Oh, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> I thought that the recycling uh, symbol will show up. Okay. Uh, it doesn't for this particular one. I don't know why. Maybe I could, if I click on it a couple different times. Oh, you know what? Even here on the right hand side. Okay, BG, look. So when I click on it on the right hand side, there's delete here as oh, well. Yeah, okay. The line markup. I usually just hit delete on the keyboard, but yeah, you could do that as well, I suppose. So it does come up on the screen, but it doesn't bring the like the little garbage bin up. Oh, yeah, like, that's, yeah. yeah, it doesn't bring it up that way. Okay. Another spot here, I just want to point out real quick on the confirmation of co-op. Multiple representation is another spot where it brings up those buyer's initials that you want to take off. If you're using the wizard to fill out your initials and you're not dragging and dropping everything on your own. Okay, and then here we get to our Schedule B. We'll do another text box. 
And it's giving us the opportunity to fill this out because this is a PDF we just saved off the listing. We can't edit it. So we'll put in, oops, click inside it. You know what I mean? All the information we need here, right? Does anybody have any questions so far about that, all of that? Is anybody confused how I got here or how yes. I did something? I'm yep. a little confused about that uh, texting part. The texting part? How to fill how in the did text? You add, add, add the text, uh, extra text over there if you do not fill it at the beginning. If I didn't fill it out on the page, how do I put the text in? Yes. Okay. Can I, can yeah, for sure, for sure. No, that's a good question. You need to know. Okay, so for instance, look at this. I forgot to put buyer yeah, and do it, please. Here. Do it slowly, please. For sure, for sure. Okay, so I'm going to go to my tools on the right-hand okay. side. Sorry, let me highlight my mouse again here. I know you guys can't see my mouse unless I highlight it. Okay, so the tools on the right-hand side here, you see? Yes. Where it says tools. Okay, I'm going to click on the tool. And every time you click on your tool, you're going to make sure that Whoever is signing or, do, or whatever you're doing for that person is the one up here because that's what they'll see when they get the email for your for e signature. Okay, so even if you're dating something, I've seen people dating something and they it's under beside their client's name. You got to make sure that it's beside not your name but your client's name if you want them to be the one dating it because that's how it'll show at the end when you authenticate everything. There's a certificate that shows up, right? But I want to put a text box here right now for the buyer information, right? Okay. So it's for Brady, and I'm going to slow, scroll down to the bottom. And you see where it says markup? Yes. I click on text box underneath markup. Okay. Okay, so it's highlighted now. It knows I want to do a text box. Okay. And I'm going to go over to the buyer line. Mm -hmm. And I just simply click my mouse. Okay. Very often, I just want to adjust it so it's nice on the line there. Right? Okay. And then I click inside the box, and it'll allow me to type. Oh, okay. I got it now. If I want to add one more, like to sign. So say I just realized the wife needs to sign this for a buyer, right? Whatever we need to add. So you got to go back up to signers. Okay. And you're going to add participants here. On the top, you can just, you can just put it in a text box if you want. You mean like this? Just create another text box and put for the price and everything. Yeah, whatever you need to do. Like even if you're getting a sign back and you're crossing out the price, you could put text box wherever you want on this document. So Brady and Behesen are buying a property, right? Okay. <laughs> you, 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 the initial changes as well, text box, yeah. The initial changes for what? What do you mean? Let's say uh, sign back. So or say sign back. say you got a sign back, it's gonna look something like this, right? Where is our offer here? Sorry, I went back too far there. So you initially offered. They're going to the initial, you know. You never have to go to the initial. You never have to print it. You never have to do anything. So say, let's just pretend I originally put a million here, right? Okay. Okay. So the other agent has taken this now. And they're going to sign it back. Whoopsie. It's going to be a little difficult to draw lines. Let's just go here. Go like this. So the other agents probably done something like this. Put another text box with their e-signature. And they've signed back 950, you were saying, for instance. Yeah, for they're probably the buyer if they're going lower. But yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, right? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Whatever. We'll, we'll figure it out. So now I, I say, oh, no, no, no. I want, I'll, I'll take 970, right? You just got to keep on making the changes. This is another point where people get confused. So it's kind of good that we're going over this. Every change needs an initial, right? So say it starts to look a little, it's actually a lot neater now that it's like um, authentic sign and you can put it type in instead of with, by pen and paper, but um, it still gets messy a little bit. So I say 970, okay? That's the way the sign back is gonna look. Of course, it's changing from buyer to seller every time, right? Every single change needs an initial. This is, I get uh, this a lot too, where people put two initials here, right? You're gonna initial that I cross this off. 
and sign back 950, right? I'm gonna initial that I cross this off and sign 970, right? Two changes have been made. We had the original document and then two changes. Two changes means two signatures from, your, from both buyer and seller, right? So if you get a sign back, that's sort of what it would look like, Sebastian. Yeah? I think everybody wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. That's good. That's a good question. Like I say, ask me anything. Sometimes it's just, I, I don't think to go over it or you guys might have a specific question. Don't be afraid to ask for sure. Is there anything else that you guys... Don't know how to do an authentic sign. So, Christine, the date will automatically show up next to the signature. The date automatically shows up next to the signature, right? So you put it on here, right? There's some places where you don't need it. Um, like I'm trying to think. Um, I've come across a couple places where you don't necessarily need it. You can delete the date individually of the signature if you don't need it. Okay. See how I just did that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. No problem. But it automatically dates it. So generally I'll come here and I'll say, okay, we need to Another sign question here. I have before and you I go. just pull the date over to the date spot. Sorry? Oh, okay. Christian, another question I have before you go. When you change no, I'm not going to go anywhere yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When we change the price by the, adding the text, uh, text over there, the, the price in, in words, that will automatically change or we have to type it out? The buyer is what? Sorry, the words? No. So well, when you're doing it, when you're doing it, if you're doing it within your kit okay. initially. Go down, go down. Yeah. Yeah, over here, over here. We are changing the price. Okay, somebody is changing the price. Right. Then whatever it comes on the uh, left-hand side is the uh, price will come uh, written in the wording, words. It will so, go, come automatically. When you're changing within the document like this in AuthentiSign, it won't change automatically. The only time it changes automatically is if you're within your kit. So let me go back to my kit here real quick with the house. And go back to this test one we were doing. So in the agreement of purchase and sale within your kit when you're in the house, not when you're in the e-signature. E-signature, you'd have to put a text box okay, if, each time. Yeah, if you put the price over here, it will... But uh, here, it automat yeah, it automatically does it here. Okay. See, so one million. Whereas one if, million. I change, if I changed it here, if you want your document to be neater and say you're just resubmitting something for a bidding war, you could come back and just change your first page here, oh. right? And resubmit the deal. I was just showing if you're getting like a sign back and you want to change the number on the sign back that you got. But in a bid situation, if, you know, they're saying, okay, no, you want to improve your offer, you could cross it out and change it the way I did. You could also come to your first page here and do it again. But then you okay. have to get your document signed again. Yes. Right? So at this point, like my sellers, my, sorry, my buyer's initials would already be here. If I was resubmitting the offer with a price change, I'd probably do it in AuthentiSign just so I'd only have to have them initial the changes that I made and not the whole document again. Okay. Yeah. But when you're in the house here, it will change the wording automatically, but not when you're in here. That's why I say, if you're in AuthentiSign, you have to remember to change the purchase price, the wording of the price, and you have to remember to change it from buyer to seller, buyer to seller, depending on what end you're on over here in the irrevocability when okay. you're back and forth on an offer. Okay, you can continue. Oh, no worries. Um, the last thing I want to show you guys real quick, hopefully it'll come through fairly quickly, is I just want to send this out. Send. Oh, you know what? I think I think I made Brady first on this. Now I'm going to have to change that actually. I wanted to show you guys what it looks like when you get something from your client, because it's good to know. Um, but I think I set this up to show you guys and I sent it to sign for Brady first. So it's gonna be difficult there. What I encourage you guys to do is, um, when you go into your signings, hold on, I'm just gonna reset this. Uh, reset. Yeah. is when you go and you practice authenticizing, send it to yourself because I find that there's a lot of times I have to walk my clients through it. 
And it's difficult if you don't know what that side of it looks like, right? So for instance, I just reset it so it sends to all signers at the same time, if you guys see that. Remember, I was showing you guys how to set it first and second if you specifically want an order for them to sign in. But I yeah. just want to send it to everybody right now. So I get it in my email here, hopefully fairly quickly, and I can show you guys what it looks like. So I've just sent it. Once you've sent the signature, it looks a little different. When you click in it, it now says individual forms and certificates, right? And it'll show you who has opened it and who has signed it, right? So right now I can see everything's just sitting in original order. I'll show you what happens when we go and we sign it. So let me just go to my email here real quick. Sometimes it doesn't come to my email first. It comes to my phone first, which is a little, I don't know why it does that. I find it happens to a lot of people in the office though. When you're in the office, it comes to your phone first before it comes to like your laptop or something. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, that one is quicker. Yeah, is it? Yeah, it's funny yeah. how it does that. So I just refresh a couple of times and wait till it comes. But essentially what you guys want to see is that it's coming. You can track whether your client's opened it and you can track whether your client has signed it, right? So over here, you see it says authenticated and approved. When your client opens the email, they consider that it's authenticated because it's been sent to the right email. You'll get a little green check here. And when it's been approved, that's when they fully finish the document. And the biggest glitch I find my clients doing is they go click, 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 and they sign. And they don't click that last box at the end that says complete signing. So very often I find I'm troubleshooting on the phone and saying, hey, no, you have to click complete signing in order for it to come back to me, right? In order for that signed document to come back. So let me just see if it's come through. How many people have tried, have tested the water with the new AuthentiSign? Yeah, yesterday I tried, but uh, just uh, I wanted to do it for myself. Yeah, it's fairly it's fairly straightforward if you're used to the old AuthentiSign. There was just a few things here and there that I was like, oh, that's different. Um, like I said, and they've worked out some of the glitches, which is great because when they started it a couple months ago now, and I went and I learned it. I found like, you know, that if you pushed it right from the MLS listing, it, that function wasn't working yet, which was annoying. Um, so I was always using classic for that. You know what I mean? Um, but like I say, I encourage you guys to go in and learn it. They're going to get rid of the old Authenta sign in a couple of days now. Um, and then when you need it in a hurry, you're going to be lost scrambling. So just go in and play around with it a little bit and get yourself familiar with it. Let me yeah, check one more time if it's coming here. It's probably gone to my phone. I didn't bring my phone here at the podium to train with me. Otherwise, I quickly send it off. But regardless, I just want to show you guys, like when it shows up, it usually says your signature is requested and you open the email and it's going to say start signing. Go in and pretend to sign, send it to yourself. Like I said, so when you're talking to your clients, you can walk them through and say, you have to click the blue button, start signing, and you have to click on the actual thing and hit complete signing at the end for it to come back to me. You have to walk them through those steps so you know how to troubleshoot on that end. When you guys are going and trying it though, if you're navigating a deal today or tomorrow or next week, or if you're just going on and you're gonna go and try and like um, practice on it a little bit, if you get stuck, call me or text me. Um, I don't mind because it's such an invaluable tool you guys can use now. Like I say, it's such a lifesaver on time. And we never, ever have to print the deal from beginning to end. You can be hundred percent paperless. So it's such a great tool to use. You guys should really, really learn how to create your kits, the templates. Hopefully you're saving you guys. They took me a really long time to put in there. So please use them and save the time. Um, Cause you guys don't have to individually go in and put your clauses in anymore. Um, and you don't have to fill out some of the office information and stuff there that I pre-filled on the forums. So hopefully it'll save you guys some time that way. And um yeah, like I say, if you have any questions, just let me know. Okay, thank you. Christine. Thank you. Anybody going to venture outside today? It's not so bad. <laughs> it's a little it's a little rough in spots at some of the intersections where they piled things up. But other than that, I think for the most part, it's clear. But everybody stay safe. Oh, you too. Okay, thank thank you. you. Yes. You also stay safe and healthy. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> have a good Bye now.
Thank you, Christine. No problem. Have a good day. Nice seeing you. Yeah, my call you. Thank you. I'll see you again. <laughs> no problem. Bye bye. See you. What is I that? I call you for uh, my questions about uh, uh, advertising. Of course, of course. Call me. So, no problem. What is your agenda for next next session? I mean, the Thursday. So I have a home inspector coming in. He's confirming his topic with me. So I'll page it out as soon as he's doing it. He is really good though. He's coming a couple of times before. Don't miss his session because he puts up really good drawings and pictures of stuff that really help us be aware of what we're looking for when we're walking through the property. Um, so like he did stuff on some pumps and septics before and things pitfalls to watch out for when we're walking through with our clients for insurance purposes. So don't miss it. I don't know what topic he's going to do. I'm going to confirm with him soon. Okay, thank you. So this uh, webinar is uh, recorded. Uh, we can go back and watch. Yeah. It. So now, now that um, I know you just joined us, so now that um, we're finished the training uh, later today, I take the recording and I send it out to everybody who missed it. But you'll get it in your inbox. Thank you very much. No problem. No problem. Okay. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. bye.